Hello, c'est Clémentine de Visions of Atlantis et vous regardez Loud TV. Of course, because uh, since the previous record, The Deep and the Dark, I was given the amazing chance to take part of the whole uh, writing process and lyrical, the lyric process too, like the writing the lyrics. I was involved since our first record that we did together. So I really felt like I was starting to make this band my own when I really could uh, vehicle my own ideas, my own emotions and the things that I really wanted to talk about um, throughout our music. And it's even more true with that new record, Wanderers, because I was even more involved in writing the melodies and I brought one personal song again onto that record, the, the title track, Wanderers, is a song of mine. So with time I really feel as one um, when I'm on stage and performing these songs and singing the lyrics that I wrote that are about things that really are connected with who I am. I feel like a like a, like a one soul on stage there with a message to deliver and there is no longer me and music, it's, it's one now. I think it became um, a new trademark from Visions of Atlantis to not stick to the strict definition of what should symphonic metal sound like. We actually would love to widen the genre and the style and uh, to dare saying we do symphonic metal but symphonic metal can sound like all of these kind of songs and not just the bombastic, highly orchestrated um, music. So we do have tracks like this, like the opening track, Release My Symphony, is the longest track of the album. It is a very epic track with a lot of things going on with the orchestra that with a more classic -y sort of singing. Um, so it, this one could totally represent the symphonic metal genre. But we go from that to the most intimate songs also. And this, this is the, what we are able to create. This is what we want to share with people as well. And um, we are a symphonic metal band, and we want to open up the genre, sort of redefine it, redefine its borders, I would say. We work with a producer who's uh, very educated in, 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 um, in producing those orchestrations. Like, he's amazing at um, finding the right instruments and the right vibe over a riff to suddenly have this song belong to another period of time or another place in the world. And we're very gifted and very happy to work with Frank, Frank Peters from Silver Line Music. He's super talented at that and he understood our universe and our moods and he really helped us again with that record to push things further and to give our music a bigger dim dimension due to his amazing orchestrations that are always surprising and rich. <laughs> he wrote some melodies that were amazing so I didn't feel like changing them at all and they were in a pretty high vocal range like if I think about um, a journey to remember like the the chorus is super high super high there in my in my mixed voice and um, I used to train this voice but I never used to sing too much using this so it was a it was challenging me putting me out of my comfort zone a little bit and this is great because this is how you evolve how you improve when you cross your own borders and you get to redefine them even further so I was very happy to to even though in the process sometimes it's a bit painful or you don't want to go there because you feel it's risky and, and the comfort zone has, it's a comfort, so it's something you don't always leave easily, but um, when you're an artist and a singer you have to um, always cross the borders and Frank um, is able to make us do that with the music he, we create together and it's amazing. <laughs> Actually, I don't think they're too sad. Um, depends, of course, which song you focus on. But the the, the overall message of, of our album is to have, have people 
uh, embrace their own nature and their own truth, going to explore themselves and take that journey when they feel the call of doing something special that means to them or going somewhere or, or just breaking with a habit that doesn't feel right anymore. Like trying to, we want people to f be at peace with themselves, to be happy, to be self, um, to be realizing themselves and to be able to do that you have to know to know yourself and if you're facing doubts or if you're wondering why you're going through this and this dark period of your of your life we want everyone to feel confident that the universe is here for us to grow and to realize ourselves and if we listen to our instincts instincts and get to know our own nature and follow our intuition we'll make the right choice that would lead us to become whom, whom we are meant to be and to finally be happy and, have, and love ourselves. And this is the message behind the wanderer's concept. And I don't think it's sad. Of course, it, we, it, sometimes you have to go through your own storms, but it's a moment that will pass too. Mm. We are never told how, and, and never taught how to be ourselves, how to f find ourselves, you know? we. As, as people, when we grow, society is, is like putting pressure on who you're supposed to become and what you're supposed to have, the job and the situation and the money and, and get married and have kids because this is what would make you happy and this is bullshit um, because it doesn't work for everyone. Some people will be very happy in that format because they would genuinely be these people, but most of, most of us aren't happy because we just don't do things that fulfill us. We do things because we have to do them. And I think this is a tragedy of humankind in the modern world to not be able to be happy, even though we don't have to care about security and, 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 and food anymore because we live in safe places. I think it's a tragedy not to be able to be happy in those circumstances. Actually, if you want to talk about the cover artwork, it's um, the entire thing is a metaphor for what I just expressed before. We we want people to um, feel comfortable, even though they had to leave standards and principles. And this is uh, represented by the ship, the the, wreck, the wrecked ship on the right hand side of the of the cover is beautiful, even though it's broken. It it's, it symbolizes the standard the standard life with all the codes and the norms and the principles and the, some values that are there that were not yours. And it, it had to face dark things on the way, it had to face demons and it cracked. And that's represented by, by the Kraken that it's dead as well on the seashore. And then you have these two people that survived the, the, the shipwreck and are now out of that conformity, that, that very safe uh, version of their own life and their own selves. And now they have to explore a wild place that they know nothing about. And we don't want this to feel like something scary. We want the, everyone to embrace the change, to embrace, to live ex and experiment something that you were never maybe meant to explore, but that, that would teach you about yourself and make you a better version of yourself afterwards. So that's the entire concept of Wanderers and the cover is expressing it like this. So yeah, before, before the Freedom Call Tour, we have um, our first short headline tour, right when our album drops at the very end of August, like for five dates. We go mostly in Germany and we start in Austria. And this will be the very first time for us to like try the waters as headliner. And uh, it's scary, it's, it's exciting, but if ever it, it works out, uh, then we will feel like a real band having our own place out there. And I think it's very important that we start um, going that road too and not just always relying on the audience of other bands yeah. and now with this new album that we're so happy about that um, that is better on every level we we hope that this is going to open new doors for us and uh, we know this band has been around for 20 years and we have to re it feels like we have to restart a bit from scratch so it's about time that we now embrace a real career and for the long run. <laughs> I have to 
say I, w I always felt um, since I was even just a metal listener um, I was the metal crowd was the one that made me felt feel accepted as who I was I I was no longer bullied by people because I looked different because I was so tall and so thin um, I've really felt accepted and that I had a yeah I, I just could be myself so even though sometimes you know as a woman you always some face some remarks or reactions or sometimes attitudes that aren't so pleasant there's the same like everywhere you always have people that um, don't treat women the right the same way as they treat men but this is not absolutely not relevant of the metal world there are women in there and they they made their own place and they're respected and I feel like that now um, as a producer and as a as a singer, um, I don't think I have to prove anything. I never felt I had to. Even though sometimes, yeah, when you work in this business and as a girl and you're young, um, yeah, I had some people being like, so, but who's really in charge here? It's me. <laughs> and just face it and it's gonna be fine. And the more and more girls there are, the more we can also show the world and educate men that we are capable, capable of everything too. So that's my duty as a woman here. Oh, yeah.